the spaceflight is well known for its high safety rating. As of February 2024, 681 people have reached the altitude of space, but only 19 astronauts have died in flight accidents. It means a low rate of death of roughly 3%. However, everything will get more serious in the future when the space tourism era blooms, especially when SpaceX Starship may get to 1,000 flights per year. It's reasonable as the more people who fly in space, the higher the likelihood of something going wrong. To prepare for that bad scenario, NASA officials have devised an idea called a space rescue mission centered on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. While the project is still on paper, debates around its feasibility have emerged in the space community, raising many issues that need to be resolved to make this idea possible. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Like the rescue fleets in the ground or ocean, the emergency rescue mission for space refers to any system that allows for the rescue or escape of personnel from situations that endanger human life in a spaceflight operation. However, unfortunately, the United States has no present capability or policy for conducting in space rescues, even though NASA researched this idea in the 20th century, and they also used to apply it in their spaceflight mission. Take, for example, the case of Apollo 13 launched on April 11, 1970. The spacecraft was made up of two independent spacecraft joined by a tunnel, Orbiter Odyssey and Lander Aquarius. The crew lived in the Odyssey on the journey to the moon. However, during flight, when at nearly 322,000 kilometers from Earth and closing in on the moon, a low-pressure warning signal was seen on a hydrogen tank in Odyssey. It leads to the escape of oxygen and a severe loss of power in the spacecraft. By then, Aquarius, which wasn't supposed to be turned on until the crew was close to landing on the moon, was active sooner to be a healthy backup. This is called a self-rescue capability during the aborted mission. Also, the space agency put in place rescue capabilities for the Skylab project carried out from 1973 to 1974. Nevertheless, they became passive in the rescue space shuttle disaster in 2003. Columbia broke apart because of damage suffered during launch when dislodged insulation foam from the shuttle's external fuel tank hit the shuttle's wing. If NASA had recognized the damage at the start of the mission, a rescue mission using the next space shuttle due for launch, Atlantis, would have been feasible. In fact, engineers had suspicions about the integrity of heat shield tiles on Columbia for days before its fatal return to Earth. However, Things have changed since the shuttle was retired and the commercial vendors are in play for rescue missions. After the disaster, NASA explored rescue scenarios and what would be done if an issue was detected with the spacecraft before re-entry. For instance, having backup shuttles available at the launch pad for the remainder of the program in case of issues, most notably the emergence of commercial vendors can be a game changer. SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which has launched the most to date, could be on standby to help people in trouble if there is time to rescue them. Atop Falcon 9, there is the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft regularly serving the orbiting complex now and being able to safely dock with the ISS. Some of them will be truly NASA's healthy backup solution, but it requires the vehicle and adapter to interface with the failed spacecraft and bring it to the ISS first. And ISS will be a safe haven where numerous backups exist in case of trouble on board because it's in the neighborhood and it's possible to send supplies there while coming up with a safer option for crossing back into the atmosphere. So, in that case, how quickly could an emergency rescue mission take? To be honest, it's a topic that the space community has been discussing a lot. A Falcon 9 launches every other day and assumes that in urgent cases, SpaceX has one prepped and ready to go. Thus, the constraint is getting a Crew Dragon ready. A quick search shows it takes four months to refurbish Crew Dragon for another launch. Dragon launches are less common and they are mostly determined by the ISS schedule. What if they didn't have one essentially ready to roll out or sitting on the pad already? Additionally, it's going to have a crew at some point and they have to make sure all the life support systems, re-entry systems, and heat shields are good to go. With four Crew Dragons, most likely there is a Dragon ready enough to launch with three five days notice. As far as I know, Dragon and Soyuz use different docking adapters, so you would also have to find or build an adapter or develop a way to transfer the astronauts between the crafts while evacuating both of them. All that within days? 
Remember in this situation we are talking about likely having just a few days to rescue them, and hours matter. If there isn't sufficient time to do the checks, you launch without doing the checks, as there's nothing to lose. You launch, and they probably live. Or, you don't launch, and they definitely die. Anyway, hopefully within those days, the crew in space would not be out of food and air. Not to mention that sometimes emergencies occur within a few seconds or minutes. Thus, we cannot ignore at least one case where theoretical space rescue service might have been useful for an extended issue. They can probably rush a few things, but when it comes to crew safety items, etc., those can't and shouldn't be rushed. So it would have to be essentially flight ready. You may have time to mount it and stack the rocket, assuming all of those stages were also ready and available at the Cape. That is where their flight cadence helps, because they likely would already have either a fully stacked Falcon 9 or 1 in the process of being stacked. But even then, if it's a rocket that has a fairing, that has to be removed carefully, given there may be a payload inside, and then crew dragon mounted, the vehicle rolled out, fueled, and wait for the Earth to rotate so you can do an orbital rendezvous with the stricken craft, then launch and hope you get there before the air runs out. So it's a lot more complicated than it seems on the surface. In short, Dragon Fleet management plays a vital role at this point, and I'm pretty sure that SpaceX should produce more spacecraft in the future for such extra missions. Further in the future, SpaceX nascent Starship Deep Space Transportation System is one key vehicle the community is waiting for. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk hopes that Starship will be able to launch several times a week, or even several times a day. If Elon develops a service dedicated to the space rescue mission on Starship, it would be a good thing because it can contribute to increasing the rocket's flight cadence. Keep in mind that the more Starship launches, the lower the cost per flight will be. The goal of two or three million dollars for one launch will become reality sooner. For low Earth orbit, companies like Virgin Galactic and Sierra Space are working on their own next generation vehicles that can presumably fly astronauts several times a week once they are ready. While any space rescue service might be a decade or more away, the key is to start planning now. There are ideas the community might be able to borrow from. For example, the International Submarine Escape and Rescue Liaison Office aims to rescue submariners no matter where they are stranded or what their nationality is. In space circles, another helpful example may be NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, that office was implemented shortly after a small asteroid unexpectedly exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia on February 15, 2013 to better coordinate a rapid response to such impacts. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time 